Mm-hmm. Anyway, podcast back for another episode. Uh, much more on the Boeing whistleblower, John Burnett. His lawyers say, and I quote, no one can believe it. Lawyers are questioning his apparent self-inflicted suicide. We got a lot more on that, too. In fact, what uh, was this, how his body was discovered, uh, what led up to it. His family is starting to speak out. We got it all on this episode. Plus more on the Kate Middleton drama. I mean, it just continues. Another photo, fake or not, and a timeline of what led up to her little hospital stay. We'll discuss Kate Middleton on this episode. And our old pal Glenn Maxwell is back in the news. So we'll follow up with that. And a couple question that might be the most interesting couple question you've ever heard. All that and more, kids, on this episode. I hope everybody is doing well on this Venn's Day. Uh, good to see everybody in the live chat. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe on whatever you're watching, Facebook or YouTube or Spotify or X. Uh, if you're on the YouTubes, don't forget to hit the bell for the notifications. That's super important. I wish somebody would have hit the bell for me so we could have started this show on time. But nonetheless, we are here and it's nice to see everybody. Uh, the Boeing whistleblower story continues and it doesn't make me feel any more comfortable for those of you who are Unaware of this story, just to set the table for you quickly, a uh, former Boeing employee of 32 years retired just a few years ago and then started talking about the fact that he noticed some unsafe um, procedures that were going on uh, within the Boeing factory down there in the Carolinas. He notified management. Management did nothing about it. Uh, after he retired, he went into whistleblower protection, if you will. It's not a real thing, but kind of is. Filed a lawsuit against Boeing. Uh, he had a problem with some of the parts that they were using. He was saying that the oxygen masks wouldn't come down and work properly. Saying a lot of things, basically keeping everybody's safety in mind. And he was amidst doing a, a deposition against the company when he didn't show up for court one day. They did a wellness check on where he was in the hotel. And oh, surprise, surprise. Uh, he was dead from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound, that according to the initial coroner report. So you're all caught up on what we went over on the episode on Monday. If you missed that, by the way, go back and watch it. It was one of our best. Uh, now we you know, dig into this a bit further, and uh, his lawyers are speaking out, and they're basically saying nobody can believe that this happened. Uh, you know, they said that he was in wonderful spirits. Uh, they said that he was set to testify. He had done so and was going back to finish up that testimony against Boeing. And uh, now his lawyers are calling for an investigation, and rightfully so. Uh, they basically said this at, at the outset on day one, but they kind of doubled down and went into it a bit further. This, of course, are attorneys Robert Turkowitz, fantastic name, and Brian Knowles, who represent John Barnett, they said in a statement on Tuesday, quote, we need more information about what happened to John. The Charleston police need to investigate this fully and accurately and tell the public. We didn't see any indication he would take his life. No one can believe it. No detail can be left unturned. Again, he was 62 years old. This was a pretty huge lawsuit that was going on against Boeing. By the way, all the accusations he made against Boeing, they did an independent, uh, the FAA did an independent safety uh, test or whatever you want to call it, protocol test on what he said. And they found that a lot of what he said was actually true and was indeed happening. So the guy wasn't lying. You know, what he was seeing in the factory for Boeing was indeed true. Now, all of a sudden, he turns up dead from a quote-unquote self-inflicted wound. I said this right away, day one, call me a conspiracy theory guy if you want, it's fine, but this is awfully suspicious for somebody who was turning, not turning things around, but doing the best he could to do the right thing, right? Doing the best he could. 
Remember, don't forget to share this episode. Again, whether you're watching on Facebook, X, YouTube, re-exit, retweet it, whatever they're calling it now. Uh, share the YouTube link on your Facebook. Share the Facebook link on your Instagram. Share it all around. Because the only way you can really combat like huge corporations doing really shitty things is uh, by spreading the word and bringing more awareness to it. So yes, it's good for the show. It's a little selfishness on our part, of course. Uh, but also at the same time, like, my God, if this guy uh, didn't take his own life, which I'm not saying anything because Colonel Pellant doesn't have the lawyer power that uh, Bowie does. Um, if he didn't, then that's a really bad thing that we all need to protect ourselves against. So make sure you guys share this around for sure. Um, Turgowitz and Knowles, his two attorneys, also said, by the way, sounds like a morning show. It sounds like a morning show in, in the Carolinas. You're listening to Turkowitz and Knowles on today's prime country, 106.7. Um, they both said he was in very good spirits and he was prepared to give a deposition, uh, you know, once again in the, uh, the boardroom where they were all meeting and doing this. Um, they continued by saying, quote, John was in the midst of a deposition in the whistleblower case, which he finally was nearing, uh, which was finally nearing the end. He was in very good spirits and looking forward to putting this phase of his life behind him and moving on. I mean, imagine if you're working at this place and you see all these things happening and you tell management and they do nothing, keep telling them they're doing nothing. All right. So then you retire and it's weighing on you. So then you start talking to people you look for whistleblower protection you start to go through the lawsuit and the whole entire process then the faa comes out and they're backing you up i mean you got to feel pretty good about that right i mean okay initially it's crummy but now you're you're in it you're you're doing it you're saving people why would you take your own life now his family also spoke out and they didn't allude to the fact that they think that somebody killed him uh, but what they what they did say was that Boeing put him through torture. So, you know, and and they, this is what they said, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but they did use the term PTSD. They basically said he had PTSD from working at Boeing, and that tells me one of two things: that this guy died, and again, not to take the blame or or the responsibility off of him if he really did decide to do this and did it okay he did but what i think is it's one of two things one this company tortured the bejesus out of him enough so that they put him in a fragile mental state that he did this or two he didn't do it and it was done to him epstein if you will i believe that's the the coined phrase we're using these days is he was epstein um by somebody because it just doesn't seem like, and I know what everybody says is like, yeah, nobody who commits suicide seems like they're suicidal. Okay. There's probably a little truth to that in some cases. Sure. You know, absolutely. But again, as his attorneys are saying, he was in good spirits. He was looking forward to, you know, putting this to rest, finishing it up. He'd done all the work, right? He He's done it. And he was backed up by the FAA. Not easy to go out there and stand on that island alone by yourself to be at the the 10 yard line and just cut it short without any sort of provocation doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. It doesn't sit well with me. It never will sit well with me. And uh, I'm going to keep talking about it until they get some more uh, information out there. Now it's in the hands of the Charleston police. They put out a statement saying that they're not going to quote on an ongoing investigation. I understand that. But, um, you know, my hope is, is that they can really figure this out because, you know, they said, and they're, they're acknowledging it right away. It's a high profile investigation. There's a lot of interest from people all around the world. This is not getting a ton of media attention in the mainstream media. I don't believe, but there's enough people paying attention to it. Us, you know, a lot of other people that are paying attention to it, probably a lot more people that will be paying attention to it again if this kind of content gets shared around. I mean, we put a we put a, a clip out of our talking about it on Monday, almost a half a million, more than a half a million views uh, in that. So people are definitely interested in something like this. Um, but the Charlotte police say they're not talking. And again, not that I don't have confidence in the Charlotte, uh, the Charleston Police Department, but it feels like this is a big thing that maybe the FBI or other law enforcement agencies should jump into and and start to get involved with, you know, 
especially when you're dealing with a gigantic corporation like Boeing that has lots of government contracts and can't be seen to be losing profit and uh, have production slowdowns and stock prices going down and all that jazz, you know, if they're if they're dealing in a high profile business like plane making, because there's not a ton of plane makers out there. I mean, it's not like a T-shirt company. You know, you hate somebody's shirt, you go to somebody else. These are these are pretty big deals, you know. And Boeing is the biggest amongst all of them. So these are these are pretty dangerous waters. And I love you know Frank is yeah uh, you know Frank's not here with us on this episode. Obviously, he was here this last episode. He's always a great voice of reason, slowing me down a little bit, saying you know, pump the brakes. You know, let's take it from all sides. And I have been thinking about it, but I uh, again. I just feel like John Barnett's name needs to stay out there and needs to be talked about because it's just way too suspicious. You know, it's way too suspicious. Now, the timeline on everything is bizarre because he left the hotel room, right? Uh, The Daily Mail did a great job putting together the timeline, you know, speaking to the police department, getting quotes, trying to figure it all out. Um. You know, he doesn't show up for court uh, court for the deposition on Friday. There's a wellness check called in. Uh, the Daily Mail got a police report and it said that Barnett extended his stay at the Holiday Inn for two more days. Um, he was set to check out the day before the alarm for a wellness check was raised. The report details that a friend of Barnett's contacted the hotel for a welfare check at 10 a.m. on March 9th with employees knocking on his hotel room door with no response. A member of the staff at the Holiday Inn down there in Charleston searched for his orange Dodge Ram truck that was in the parking lot hotel and discovered Barnett had been deceased in the driver's seat with a silver handgun in his right hand. According to the uh, report, Barnett had his right pointer finger remaining on the trigger and suffered a gunshot wound near his right temple. Um, the report also states that there was a white piece of paper closely resembling a note lying in plain view on the passenger seat. The contents of that note have not been revealed. A member of the staff at the hotel told investigators that he heard a pop around 9 30 AM when he was working on the exterior of the hotel with Barnett's truck discovered at the rear of the property. Surveillance footage from the hotel shows Barnett exiting the hotel the morning of March 8th though the alarm was not raised until 24 hours later. Um, And of course, I told you that the the Charleston Police Department, uh, through Sergeant Anthony Gibson, released a statement basically saying that detectives are actively investigating this case and are awaiting a formal death, cause of death, along with additional findings that might be further shedding light on the circumstances surrounding this death. And then they go on to say that they're not going to be talking about it because it's an ongoing investigation, which, of course, is, you know, totally understandable. But again, you know, sometimes these things are a little bit bigger than the local police department. You know, you need the FBI to come in there, you know, and help out. If not take over entirely, you just kind of help out a little bit. So uh, good to see that Mercury is with me. Totally agree with you, Ant. Weird timing. It's just it's too weird of timing. You know, it's just too bizarre of a, of a timing circumstance. I just, I don't know. Some don't sit right, don't smell right, don't. Uh, it doesn't doesn't jive in my head here, especially when his attorneys are saying this. And then you got the family coming out, and again, they don't come out and say, "I don't think he did it," but they come out and go, "This guy, you know, th- this company put this guy through hell." I mean, it is not easy to be the person that blows the whistle. Let's just acknowledge that for a second. That's not an easy thing to be. To be out there, like I said before, standing on that island alone and by yourself, that sucks, man. That sucks. And you can't imagine the people that come by you and talk shit to you and say stuff or give you looks or this or that. I mean, it just stinks. But again, a couple of things here are a little blurry, a little fuzzy. And again, we'll learn more as we keep looking into it. But he extends his stay. Then he doesn't show up. Then the surveillance sees him leaving uh, the hotel, which seems like a, a, a while before. Uh, you know, then they hear a pop, which nobody really reacts to, which I kind of get. I mean, I don't know how you guys feel about that. I, you know, I don't know what I, I know. Charleston's a city. I know it's in the south, like out here by me. 
there's a lot of hunting that goes on. So on occasion, you'll hear a boom. You'll hear a kind of a gunshot, and you don't really think anything of. I don't panic and go running outside. You know, I mean, a lot that kind of stuff happens a lot of times. I feel it's kind of commonplace, and you know, especially like in the morning, I'll kind of hear the hunters off in the distance. Everything is really quiet. You you hear a little a little boom. You know, yeah, all right. What was that? I don't even know. Who knows? You know, even even when I lived in in the city, you know, you'd hear like a little, you'd hear kind of like a gunshot, and you go, "Oh, somebody got shot." I mean, then you don't get off your off your chair, you know, you just kind of go about your business, you just keep going about your day. That kind of stuff happens, you know. Who knows if that's like a common thing down there? If it's like where I live, where they got, you know, forest nearby, and there's hunting that takes place. Who knows? But either way, the guy doesn't react. <clears throat> you know, and then they find them all this time later. I don't know. It seems kind of weird. I'd also like to see the, um, yeah, Mercury gunshot. Gunshots don't even phase me. You know, I also like to see the the property and see what that's like down there. Because it, you know, is it is it wide open? Is there, are people passing by? Yeah, because if it's somewhere where people could be passing by, then. Nobody's going to notice that. Nobody's going to notice a dead guy like 24 hours. You know, Robin, we hear shots all the time. Yeah, I guess. So you're right. I mean, I feel like that's a common thing. Like you hear, you know, loud noises, you know. Um, like I said, even when I was in the city, you would hear things. And sometimes it was the, the, the airport, the planes. Who knows what it was. But nobody really moves, you know, when you hear that kind of stuff. So I'm not surprised that there was no reaction from the uh, from the people. But I heard that it was like a, when they said wellness check and initially, I thought, oh, the police went by. But no, it was just the hotel staff, um, which, you know, I guess, I don't know. It seems kind of strange. I mean, it makes sense if he's not in his room. OK, he drives this kind of car. Is it in the parking lot? All right. You go and you look around the parking lot and then you find it and then you see what's what. Um, Strange. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think. Am I crazy? Because I don't feel that crazy. I don't feel that crazy to be raising questions about this. Um, and I also think that the fact that it's being investigated by the Charleston PD and they're keeping it quiet, again, procedurally, procedurally they have to. Um, but again, I just I think it just kind of shows, I, I don't know. I think they're just going to find more here. I think they're just going to find more here. Um, I don't know if he has a drug history or whatever. I wouldn't be surprised if there was some drugs in his system. Again, I don't think that that says anything because he could have been drugged versus taking the drugs on his own. You know, it just depends how much, you know, sometimes you hear those cases where somebody was drugged up so much that they couldn't even, you know, lift up a gun and pull a trigger, you know, could have been one of those cases for all we know, but I just don't think that this should go off quietly into the into the darkness of the internet. Um, so again, we will keep our eye on this story and update everybody if there's any sort of uh, developments in it for sure. Kate Middleton, dear lord, boy, this Kate Middleton, right? The Photoshop and is she okay? Is this happening? Is that happening? Initially, I thought oh, all the conspiracy theory people are crazy. So she hasn't been around. She's gotten the surgery. What's the big deal? This and that. Um, all that kind of jazz. And then we find out that she puts out a photo, which the AP takes down because they're like, oh, this photo is not real. And then she goes and further apologizes for putting out a Photoshop photo, which was pointed out to me after our last episode. The crown rarely, I mean, rarely apologizes um which is pretty true because i you know i i felt like you know i, I kind of knew that but then i they say it was said a lot and then i looked it up and i'm like oh yeah uh they don't really do this they don't really go oh sorry guys sorry i you know said the uh sorry i uh, put out the, uh, the fake photo there i mean that doesn't happen it just does not happen it all seems very, very, very suspicious. Very suspicious. Now, there was another photo of her that was put out, her in the car with Prince William, which 
was accused of being photoshopped again, but uh, that has been debunked, meaning that it is a genuine photo. But again, it was just like a quick car shot and she's kind of barely in it. You know, you can't really see her all that clearly. Um, let me see here. Kate Middleton seen leaving Windsor with Prince William for a private appointment after issuing photo apology. Uh, you know, again, it's she's in the car. There's like reflections. She's like looking the other way. So I understand people's suspicion. Um, and I can't show you that photo because we, we don't have the rights to it. So, uh, but if you look it up, in fact, I'll just copy this people, people magazine article. I'll put it in the chat for everybody to take a look. See, um, if you take a look at it, it's not like she's like, Oh, smiling about, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like she's like, Hey, it's me, everybody. And I'm fine. Uh, which is kind of what you would expect after botching Photoshop gate. You know what I mean? You kind of think you would put a big like, uh, hey, everybody, I'm here. I'm in the car. Hey, let me give everybody a wave so uh, everybody knows I'm A-OK. No, she's looking the other way, um, and um, that's all we got. Now, I saw people on TikTok that are like, oh, this is fake, and here it lines up with another photo. It didn't make sense to me because in the other photo that they were trying to put that in, she was wearing a different kind of like earring kind of thing. And people were analyzing the bricks and whatever, but it's been debunked from what I understand. I mean, of course, that could change, but it's been debunked because of the bricks in the background of the, the building that they were passing by. It seems like it makes sense. Not what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is everything prior to this, because I went back and looked at the timeline of the royal family activity, which is not something that I would keep my eye on. Um, and again, it wasn't even something that I did prior to Monday's episode. But after Monday's episode, I'm like, let me go back and see what was going on here with Kate Middleton. And it's kind of crazy. You know, there's weird stuff because now well, there's all that stuff out there that's like, uh, he's uh, Prince William's cheating on her. Uh, then it was uh, Prince William's uh, uh, got an out of control temper and maybe did he abuse her and all this kind of crazy jazz. And I'm like, look, I'm not here to say anything nuts. But what I will say is just prior to Christmas, uh, Kate Middleton shows up with some bandages on her fingers, right? And like her fingers like bandaged together. And she said she had an accident on a trampoline. It was a trampolining accident with her kids, which is understandable because I actually feel like I injured myself more just being around my children than anything else, like picking up stuff or, you know, getting hit with a baseball, come flying back in my head, that kind of stuff. You know, that, that kind of stuff happens. But she had those uh, bandages on her on her fingers for quite some time. And then the bandages actually expanded. Like they started off like this big and then they were like the whole, the whole finger much after. All right. So that was the one thing. Then there was one night where I don't know where they were in the country uh, or what castle or where they were hanging or whatever. But boom, ambulances come flying out of the place and no word from the crown. They don't comment on it. Then we get the word that she needs surgery and that she's canceling everything. Okay. A little weird, I guess, but also you're like, okay, she deserves her privacy. Does one have to do with the other? The fingers, all right, we could wash the fingers away. Uh, you know, I guess maybe it was her and the thing and whatever and blah, blah, blah. Now everybody's saying everybody in her family were surprised that she had to get surgery. Even that I can buy, though, because it's like, all right, oh, I got this thing. And then next thing you know, you get the other test and you find out it's worse. And then you got to go in for surgery. So, OK, that can happen. You could be shocked by that. That's an easy thing to be shocked by. So then she goes into the hospital and now we know the hospital that she's going into and all the like local British media is doing stand ups in front of it. Stand ups like when the reporter's like, oh, there, Kate Middleton's just inside, you know, that kind of stuff. They're doing news reports from there. And from that moment that we know that she gets surgery and she cancels all her appearances, the, the media is just, they're staked out. They're there. They are covering Operation Kate Middleton surgery, right? They're on top of it at no point from the time that she goes in to the time that she comes out 
Is there not somebody pointing a camera at this building? Do you know the whole entire time that she was in the building, which was over three weeks, her husband only came to visit her once? Once. Does anybody else find that strange? Because that I find strange. Now, I had... Uh, not that I not not to blow up anything, but a while ago, Cuddles had to go into the hospital. Right, it wasn't for too long of a stay. Certainly not Kate Middleton, you know. Um, and it was different because you know, like I had the kids, you know, my sister was like it was away. Like no, there was it was like the, the perfect storm of like we were just like kind of by ourselves and having to deal with it. Right. I still don't think that I would have gone like we still visited, you know, it, it was only like a, I don't even know if it was two days, but it was like a day. It was like an overnight thing. We were still like all over it. You know, we were there the other day, then went back, we brought stuff, you know, we make sure she's comfortable, uh, you know, went back, had to bring something else that was forgotten, you know, back again, like, uh, you know, and then, the, and then the pickup, like all that stuff. Now I understand that the Royal family is not, the AOA podcast family. Okay, I get that. But three weeks and you come one time? One time. That's not a little weird to anybody. I know you're the prince, but that's your wife, man. I mean, nobody who had a scheduled appearance with the prince would have been like, oh, I can't believe he's not visiting now because he's got to go see his wife in the hospital. What a selfish past. Like, nobody's going to say that ever. Go be with your wife. Her children visited zero times. Zero times. Now, I understand, you know, again, like when my wife had our second child, we brought my son. Again, when you have a baby, what's that, a three-day stay? So not the not, not three weeks, but we brought my son, you know, you know, my, my wife is like in bed, like half dead, you know, because she just produced a human being. Right. Uh, you know, so he and he was a baby. He didn't get the mom he was used to, but he still he crawled up into that bed and he just snuggled next to her. He wanted to be with his mom. I can't imagine the kids going without their mom for three weeks while she's laid up in a hospital. That nobody on the staff or family members or anything could just bring the kids by for a little visit. You know, I mean, doesn't that seem a little weird. Uh, Bird, because the AOA crew is more VIP than the Royal family. This whole crew, you guys in the live chat, you are definitely more VIP than the family. If any of you guys wind up in the hospital. You let me know. Guess who's going to be there more than once. Your old pal aunt. You want to know why? This much better than Prince William. I'm going to make it this much better. I'm going to make it bigger for those of you people listening. I made my fingers bigger because of this beautiful head of hair. I'm not saying I'm a better person. I'm just saying better hair. I will visit you more in the hospital than once. That's it. You take that information and do with it what you will. But that's how I feel. Aunt versus Prince William. Okay. And that's what I'm talking about right there. Um, so I find that very strange. Husband visits once, kids visit zero times. And again, I know they have young kids, but like the one kid is like, I don't know, 10, maybe eight. He looks pretty up there, you know? Uh, Carol, good. Uh, I like this from Carol here. Newest rumor that could explain such a long recovery from the public is that she has severe colitis and she had a section of her colon removed and was now wearing an, uh, a uh, bag. Okay, fine. You know, I, I could buy that. Hey, maybe it was this, maybe it was that. Maybe she's going through some personal shit. She doesn't want it all out there. That's understandable. But one visit? One? In three weeks? I don't know. Look, maybe it's a royal family thing, and maybe I'm too much of an Italian. But one of us goes into a hospital, the fucking family moves in next door. Okay. That is just the way the Italians roll. Now, that might be a good thing or a bad thing. Being a part Italian, I can tell you it's 50-50. It's 50-50. Sometimes you just want to be left the hell alone. 
but you one one member of the 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 family goes in the hospital next thing you know the whole goddamn fucking visiting room smells like prosciutto and fresh mutts okay we're in there we're making sandwiches in the corner trying to hide it from the other nurses uh while we take our turns going in and out of the room that's just what we do we fucking move in maybe it's different over there in england i don't know I'm not entirely sure how the English do it, but one time visit from the husband seems batshit crazy to me. Um, and by the way, that is it. King Charles and the queen visited once. None of her family, none of her family visited. Nobody that she is related to popped in to bring off a uh, bouquet of flowers and a card. Nobody. Does, does any like, that's strange. Cousins, I, not, nobody, nobody, nobody came to visit. Nobody, not one person. Then we didn't even know when she got out, but she got out. And then all this kind of crazy jazz happening. Something doesn't add up here. So again, I'm not saying that he's slugging her around. God, I hope not. Uh, but his dad is a piece of work who cheated on Princess Di, who is gorgeous. Kate Middleton, beautiful. And the one that they're saying that he's cheating on Kate with, disgusting. I don't, I don't get these guys who score these women way above their head. I mean, Prince William is a fucking three and a half at best. Kate's up in the eights. When you score that far over your head and then you're still going to go out and cheat on them with a fucking six, that doesn't, I, I don't, somebody's going to have to explain that to me one day. I just don't get it. I really just don't get it. Uh, Christine, maybe she's got uh, COVID. Something must be going on, says Mercury. Sarah says, do you think there's tunnels? I mean, look, there might be. You know, there might be tunnels, but why make up when you're the royal family, everything is public, right? So if you're the husband, you're going to sneak in seven times and go in publicly one time. It doesn't make sense. Just go in. Nobody would have thought it was suspicious if if Prince William showed up every other day, you know, or once every three or four days to visit Kate amidst his thing. Nobody would have thought that was weird. So I don't know why you'd sneak him in and out. You know, I don't know why you'd sneak the kids in and out. They're part of the royal family. They're used to going places where there's a lot of media attention. So none of that makes sense. The thing with the tunnels, though, I mean, it is a high-profile private hospital. I will say that. It, it is like one of those exclusive, like, ritz Carlton-y kind of, you know, fucking places. That is, like, super nice. You know, so who knows what's possible there? You know, I just don't know. But I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't make, doesn't make a whole hell of a lot of sense to even use the tunnels if there are some. Bird says some people bring their whole family for eye surgeries where she works. The surgeries usually only last 15 minutes and they go home. It cracks me up when the whole family is in the waiting room. Those are Italian. But yeah, see, those patients must be Italian. 100%. That's how you can tell. That is how you can tell. Going for a 15 minute eye surgery and fucking Nona and cousin Carla have to be there to fucking help you walk out on the way out. It's unbelievable. You can't get rid of those Italians. You just can't. They're like termites to a tree. We're just in there. Just like, can I help? Can I get you something? Do you want some more prosciutto? And you're like, I mean, I can't eat anything. Get out of here. But they're like, all right. Hey, listen, I'm just trying to help. That's also another sign of an Italian. You get this. I, hey, I, hey, I, I was trying to help. That's always what an Italian. They're there to help, but they're annoyed that they're annoying you. Okay? Don't yell at me. I'm just trying to help. That's, that's an Italian. You don't need a 23 in me with that identifier. You just put somebody in a situation where they go, what do you want from me? I'm just here to help you. Okay? Italian. No need to no need to 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 take any blood or anything else like that. You know what I'm saying? Um let me see here, Raven. I have sisters. I have 
which one are you a lot? So we piggyback. Uh, I, don't know, I lost some of that there, Raven, but I'm guessing that one sister goes and then the other sister gets the appointment right after. Is that how it works? Yeah, it's like a family. It's a family thing. You know, it's a family kind of thing. Uh, Christine agrees that Kate is much better than that Rose person. Yeah, what's her name? I had her uh, name in my notes. I mean, like bug-eyed and ugly. Oh, here it is. Rose Hanbury? Is that it? <sighs> gross. Absolutely gross. Yeah, I think it's Rose Hanbury. I, I don't get these guys. But then, you know, I couldn't. Like Princess Di, very attractive, beautiful, gorgeous. At best, a point and a half underneath Diana. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and put her like three and a half points down. But at best, a point and a half. That's all I will allow. I mean, if you're going to argue that Camilla's hot, she's at least a point and a half underneath Diana. I'm sorry. That's just, that's just it. That's just it. And listen, it's a tough thing, right? When you're going through a health scare and you're worrying about yourself and all that, you don't worry about the media and whatever the people are thinking about you. You concentrate on your own shit. But I'm just saying, this is very strange. And people went also as far to say like, well, then uh, Charles announced like his cancer scare to kind of like pull the attention away from it and all that jazz, you know? So I... I don't know. Again, it's the kind of thing that doesn't really add up. And I was, again, on the side of letting this, like, when people were bringing this up two weeks ago, I'm like, you're crazy. Leave it alone. Now who's the crazy person? Mm -mm, the one who didn't believe them all. Because putting out that Photoshop photo and then apologizing it, you know, and then not, not rectifying it with a, I'm okay picture. Like, here, here I am holding today's paper with my arm around my husband. You know, you're not that worried about making the, the whole thing right. Making it seem like you guys are all crazy for thinking more of this than it is. You know. It's a good point from Bird. Maybe she had a miscarriage would explain keeping the kids away. Maybe she had severe depression. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Could be. You know, it could absolutely be. But I, I, again, even still, I just I, I have a hard time thinking like she wouldn't want to see those kids at some point. But I mean, you you could be right. Hey, depression, three weeks, you know, things get, you know, depression. You just, it's a whole nother thing. It, things get crazy with depression. It's true. Maybe you do kind of to keep her away. You know, I was thinking more like the stomach, like they don't want the kids around because they'll be jumping over her and all that kind of jazz. But even like, like, again, I said, I wasn't crazy about my son visiting because it was such a pain at the hospital at the time like when my daughter was born there's so many rules and things and he gotta wash his hands and all this jazz but i just couldn't you know like he he was asking about mommy like you know and family here watching him and he's asking about mommy he's calling he's looking at mommy on the face like you couldn't you couldn't say no to that you know you just couldn't say no to that kind of thing uh, Stacy with a good question here, but why take the kids out of school? Hey, listen, true, but at the same time, hey, they're just kids. School. Not that big of a deal. My wife and I are talking right now about, you know, we're trying to plan our trip, our vacation. We're like, should we take the kids out of school for a week? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Lifetime of memories versus fucking a Thursday at school as an eight year old. Like, who gives a shit? Nobody's going to ever remember that. Nobody's going to remember that. Take those kids right out of school. I think the people that go on vacation when everybody else does, I think those are the crazy people. Because why would you want to pay 50 times as much for a flight? That doesn't make any sense to me. I think we should all be pulling our kids out of school at random times. At no time in the school year should every kid be in that class. There should always be a kid away going on vacation. That's what I think. But listen, it could be a lot of things. This all could absolutely be above water. And strange coincidences. I'll believe that more and this whole Kate Middleton thing than the John Burnett Boeing whistleblower thing. That I can't believe. This, I, I could go along with it. There's something weird happening. They just don't want to tell anybody. But got to keep my eye on it because, you know, it's just very strange. 
It's the husband and not visiting. Like, again, a lot of people are making cases for the kids in the live chat. Uh, okay. I, I can acquiesce to that. I can give you all the benefit of the doubt. I know we're just jabbing back and forth, having fun. Um, I bet I, I can give you the benefit of the doubt on the kids. The husband? Mm, no, not so much. Yeah, that's the partner, man. You got to get in there. Fucking got to get in there and cheer her up. Be a part of it all. Make it happen. Check in. What's more important than your life partner? Right? Whether you're married or not. Like, I know people, oh, this is my girlfriend of 44 years. Oh, okay, well, hey, whatever. Isn't that a husband? Okay, fine. Doesn't matter. The person that you, like, I, I don't have to put a label on it. The person that you have locked in with, what is more important than their health? What do you have to go to? Even if you are the fucking prince, even if he's the king, I'm still going to say, mm, no. Even the president of the United States, no matter who, what time you want to pick, this one, the last one, the 10 before, if your partner gets sick, you tell the world, uh, not now. Can't go to that, can't go to the Peace in the Middle East conference because I got to make sure my wife is okay. I would totally understand that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Kaylin, my dog, locked in. Sometimes it's a pet. It's fine. Nobody here is here to judge. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's here to judge. That dog gets sick. You call up work and be like, guess what? No TPS reports today work. My dog is sick. Go fuck yourself. And you stand by that pup's side and you wait till they're okay. That's perfectly acceptable. These are your people. You just never know. You just never know when it's the last time you're going to be with somebody. And also, I strongly believe in, you know, I don't know what it is, but when you're surrounded by loved ones, you put, you put somebody on life support, you put two people on life support, and one's with their family and one's not, I will bet my entire life savings the one with the family will have a better chance of, uh, of surviving. Thanks to Sarah for getting my TPS line. Appreciate that. I don't know if everybody will get that one, but the good ones, the good ones will. You know what I'm saying? You know, they say that the, there's always that uh, cancer study that they say, you know, laughter, you know, helps cancer patients, uh, cancer patients that laugh more, survive more, all that kind of jazz. I believe in that shit. I think it's why we're all here, you know, right now doing this podcast. Shit's funny. Got to laugh at it. It's a better way of going through life than sitting there frowning all the time and worrying about rules and, you know, what you can say and can't say and all that horse shit that everybody trying to push on you. Just laugh a little. Got to laugh. You got to go through your day getting a couple of those laughs and you're going to be way happier than the people who don't, you know? So I believe in that. So the fact that, that you can let your partner go and not be there to kind of make them giggle or just be around them or just have that support, man, that's tough. Unless you were the one that helped them get there. Unless you were the one that put them in the hospital. But I'm not saying anything. I'm just mumbling it under my breath. <coughs> just mumbling it quietly. But I'm not saying, hey, hey, uh, what do you want from me? I'm just here to help. All right. Uh, Ghislaine Maxwell, last one. Uh, Ghislaine, our old pal Ghislaine, where would we be without her? She's uh, filing for appeal. No surprise here, but you know, we always keep you updated. We're not going to ignore the stories that we spent so much time on. Um, she's basically claiming that the sweetheart deal that Epstein got all those years ago back in Florida gives, uh, gives her uh, some immunity. So uh, she's trying that whole thing. Uh, the appeal is being heard in the second U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in New York, a brief filed last year by her attorneys, asked the court to review the statute of limitations whether Maxwell's trial violated a prior non-prosecution agreement, an allegation of juror misconduct, and Maxwell's sentencing. Um, Maxwell's lawyers have argued that after Epstein's death, she became the scapegoat due to outrage over his crimes, blah, 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 blah. We've heard all that stuff already. If her appeal, uh, appeal fails, 
She's not eligible for release until July of 2037 on multiple counts of uh, child sex trafficking. She is an inmate at the Federal Correctional Institute in Tallahassee, a low security prison. Um, so that's that. I, I think she tried. They tried to throw this stuff at the judge initially during the court case, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, none of that was taken taken to heart. I bring it up though because you know, again, the uh, the sweetheart deal, the depositions, all that kind of stuff that revolved around that Florida case. Um, our man Ron De Sanctimonious, he just signed the bill that basically would allow all the documentation around that case, the grand jury, to come out. So we're gonna find out a bunch more about that particular deal. Hopefully, very, very soon. He signed it. The legislator put it forward. He signed it. So it's coming. You know, I know we often wait for these document dumps from people. And again, I don't know when, but it's coming. The law is done. They're just doing all the things they do to get a law going. Uh, so all that will be out. So we'll know a lot more about that. It'll kind of go hand in hand with this. But I suspect that this will go absolutely nowhere. She deserves to be in there till 2137, let alone 2037. Uh, and that's it. That's my thought on Ghislaine. Uh, finally, I want to pose this question. And I'm going to pose it to everybody. And I'd love you to answer in the comments. Now, live chat, my people, my hardcore AOA fans who I love so much in the live chat. You can put an answer in the live chat. I'm going to tell you not to. And the reason why is I want you to wait till the episode is done. Go back in and just comment. Leave a comment on the episode. Because that that will be there forever. The live chat stuff comes and goes. The comments stay forever. So if you're watching on YouTube, comment on the YouTube video. If you're watching on Facebook, comment on the Facebook video. If you're watching on Spotify, you can comment there. I'd love you to comment on Twitter or Spotify or wherever. I want to comment to this question because I think this is the most interesting couple question I've come across in quite a while. And I want to share it with you. Again, I'm not going to give an answer now. We'll give an answer next episode. So come back on the Friday episode and we'll pick this up on Friday. <clears throat> Assuming that the multiverse is real, which most scientists would say is the case, right? But there is a multiverse. That's somewhere in the multiverse. There's another version of you doing something slightly different. Maybe it's a second behind you. Maybe it's a second ahead of you that there's versions of you in the future past. There's versions of you who, you know, made a left turn this morning instead of making a right turn this morning. There's versions of you that picked a different career to get into, blah, 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 so on and so forth. Let's assume that you find a way to travel between multiverse, travel within the multiverse, and you could go to another place, time, however you want to describe it. And you have relations with your significant other in that universe. Is that cheating? Can you be accused of cheating? That's the question. No answers right now. You might be passionate and be like, I got an answer for you. And I don't know. Let's say you're married, you have a husband. Let's say you're married, you have a wife. Let's say you're married and you have a they life partner. Whatever, whatever you I, I'm not here to judge. What do you want from me? I'm just here to help. I'm just here to ask the question. Whatever it is, even if you're even if you're locked in with your dog, you go in and you pet another dog. You give another dog a treat. Is that cheating? Is that cheating? We're going to add this follow-up question from Bert because this is brilliant. If you mess with yourself, is it also an affair? That's a part B I didn't anticipate, but I'll take it. Allowed. <laughs> Accepted. <laughs> I don't have a bell anywhere. Gachen. We'll have to settle for that. We got to really get a bell on this thing. I mean, Gachen. that's all we have, but... Mm. We have what? Wrong. We have a wrong. We don't have a right. 
is messing with yourself in another multiverse considered an affair? Self-love is important. I will die on that hill. That's true. Self-love is important. Um, I was going to give an answer to that. and I just, I just thought myself, I'm not going to do it. But that's the question. You go into the multiverse. You find your significant other in the multiverse. You have relations with them. Is that cheating? Comment below. Comment below. Facebook, YouTube, on Twitter, on X, if you feel more comfortable. If you're a Spotify person and you just want to put it somewhere else, put it on X. Put it on Instagram, wherever you got to put it. Um, if you put it on your partner in another multiverse, is it cheating? That's the question. And you have two days to ponder it. We will argue that question out. Amongst the panel, we will read and share your answers on the Friday episode. Will says, great show. I appreciate that. It felt pretty good. I wasn't sure. But now that Will is confirmed, I'll, I will accept that as well. I will go along with that and appreciate that. I love the solo shows where you and I just get to hang. Uh, always a lot of fun. I love doing the show with everybody. The whole family will be back on Friday's episode. Uh, don't forget to go ahead and pick up that oval book from Aaron. If you're uh, in the market for a new book, it's available hard uh, in the uh, real version that you can touch and the audio version that you can listen to. I don't know about the multiverse version. I will, I'll get back to you on that for sure. Show me potato salad. Maybe we should go now. <laughs>